So, an old man with a big nose is the new WWE heavyweight champion. Uh, I think WWE got this wrong. Uh, I've seen a lot of reviews actually for the Royal Rumble and they've been very positive. I've got to admit that whilst I was watching it, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining, um, so it was a solid show. By no means is it a disastrous pay-per-view, but um, they made some very, very weird booking choices. So the first match was the pre-show match. Um, not really a great deal to say, to tell the truth. It was pretty entertaining. Massive pop for Damian Sandow. He, he got thrown into this really weird tag team with Darren Young. Um, I was hoping that those guys were going to be successful. They weren't. Uh, and it ended up meaning that Mark Henry and uh, Jack Swagger went through to the Royal Rumble match. First proper match, Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. I had high hopes for this match and it did not disappoint. What a fantastic performance by both guys. Did everything I thought it was going to do. It spent more time out of the ring than it did in the ring. Um, there was a lot of weapons being used. We saw tables and kendo sticks, um, chairs. It was Everything was kicking off. And the right person won. I wanted Ambrose to win because I want him to have a good run with that championship. He did win, and I've got to be honest, I thought that that was going to set us up for uh, hopefully what was going to be an, an Owens victory in the Rumble. Uh, next match we went into was the New Day. New Day against the Usos, um, and they came out with a new trombone, uh, Francesca 2. Um, and if you've actually gone to the WWE shop, um, they're selling t-shirts at the moment of Francesca with 2015 to 2016, which is pretty smart. Really good pace match to this. It was really entertaining, um, but I was pleased to see the New Day uh, retain the titles. I think a lot of people thought the Usos, um, what with being tag team of last year, were going to come out and uh, take this one. They they don't deserve it. They've they've not they've not built up enough steam, if you will. There's there's not enough reasons to think that they're going to be. Um, worthy champions at this stage in their career uh, certainly not with the New Day knocking around just desperately desperately want to see Enzo and Cass now just want to get Enzo and Cass onto Raw um, just to have a really good couple of months feud uh, with the New Day I said in the previous video that the tag team division is, is in absolutely dire need of some fresh blood um, I'd even bring up Jordan and Gable. They are so over. Jordan and Gable. Gable can go in the ring. Jordan can go in the ring, but you know he brings he brings a bit of power to the duo. You know, if you had Enzo and Cass and the New Day and Jordan and Gable and the Lucha Dragons when Sin Cara comes back, um, I think that starts to lay the foundation for a very exciting tag division. So next up, Kalisto against Alberto Del Rio. Um, didn't see the result come in. The match itself was pretty slow paced. It was it was forgettable. Um, but I'm pleased that Kalisto won. I think that's going to open up a few doors for him going forward. But he's going to have to produce better matches than this. Um, there was there was really nothing that really stuck out for me or particularly entertained me. Um, I was just quite happy to see it finish. Next up, we've got a really good, strong Divas match, and it was about time we had one. Charlotte against Becky Lynch. Ric Flair was all over this, getting involved. Uh, he had a couple of moments where um, he kisses Becky Lynch, which was a bit weird. Um, even actually at the end, when he threw his jacket over her to distract her, that was a bit weird. Um, but the, the match itself had good pace. There was a lot of reversals. Um, both women know uh, each other's style really well and um, really entertaining. I uh, loved the finish with Sasha coming out. Great moment. Um, and then when she turns on Charlotte, kind of sets us off to where I hoped we were going to go. And that is a Sasha Banks versus Charlotte feud. And then the big event itself, the Royal Rumble match. What What I really struggle with with this is... Triple H is responsible for NXT and he is responsible for helping to bring the kids through. You know, as he's stood in the locker room and he's looking around and he can see Neville 
and you can see Ambrose and you can see Reigns who granted does already have the title but you can see Rusev and he can see Kevin Owens and we know that Sami Zayn was there as well as a surprise entrant he, he must have been looking around and must have felt a, a bit of pride but at what point did he then think I'm going to have the title I should carry the title over these guys. I'm not going to give them that final push, that final platform to to make them a main event star. Uh, I'll do it myself. So first off, we get Reigns. And uh, the second person that I was hoping would be Curtis Axel. And as, I, as I explained, I wanted there to be a good couple of minutes where Axel was trying to avoid getting eliminated, maybe get a bit of offence. Um, but instead it was Rusev. Don't really have a problem with that. I understand why they would want someone from the League of Nations out there, um, you know, put Roman to the sword straight away. But I don't understand why Rusev was eliminated so quickly as if he was nothing. When they counted down to number three and out came AJ Styles, it didn't matter that we knew that it was likely he would be in the Rumble. It didn't matter that it was number three so early on in the rumble the music is fantastic you know that really really relevant really now you know it kind of sounds like uh, it sounds like the start of a kendrick lamar track um with with that kind of organy synth sound Really good, really impressive. It was a brilliant start to the Rumble. Um, but then where did we go from there? You know, number four, I seem to recall being Tyler Breeze. I love Tyler Breeze. Big fan of NXT, but he, he didn't last long. And it was, it was just all a bit flat. The spot with the New Day wasn't that impressive. You know, we've seen before with him using chairs and running along the barrier. Uh, this time he got knocked out and ended up getting on top of Big E's shoulders. It's really difficult to get excited about that when last year he did pretty much the same thing with the Rosebuds carrying him around the ring. I was hoping for something a little bit different. I was hoping that you know he might use the the cover of the announce tables, maybe use that as a bridge uh, to get from the announce table into the ring or you know maybe some maybe he'd use like his top or something to try and get back in if there was someone else another new day member that was in the ring or they've got to start thinking a little more outside of the box didn't see half of it apparently he's eating popcorn and drinking coke and all this kind of stuff but it's over the other side of the ring um when he eventually gets eliminated we didn't see that either um we, you catch it on a replay, I think, at one point, but so much was missed. Um, Gold Dust came in, didn't really do anything. Ryback came in, didn't really do anything. Mark Henry came in, didn't really do anything. Jack Swagger came in, didn't really do anything. Um, where were the... Here's my question. Here's a question for you. Where were the legends? There was a moment, actually, where... Uh, number four, I think, is Curtis Axel. Is number four Curtis Axel? Or maybe five is Curtis Axel. And um, the music for The Social Outcast, the start of it, is close to identical to the start of the Hardy Boys music. Go back and watch it. There's a big cheer when that Social Outcast music start because people are, are under the impression Jeff Hardy's coming. But this is what I'm saying, it never appeared. If you want to talk about legends, Triple H out at 30, which was a dead cert was going to happen anyway. Could have, could have put my house on that happening. Um, wasn't a surprise. Um, but yeah, there was, there was nobody. Uh, Sami Zayn coming out was a nice moment. Um, certainly when he made a B lie straight for, straight for Owens. But I wanted Owens to win the Rumble because I would like to have seen Owens versus Lesnar and it looks as though we're going to get Wyatt Lesnar and just don't do it for me. The Wyatt family just don't do it for me because 
They've had opportunities with the Wyatts time and time again to build them up, put them over, and they've never pulled the trigger. And WWE had another opportunity tonight to pull the trigger. You know, you could have had Ziggler win it. You could have had Owens win it. For a short moment, brief moment, I honestly thought Ambrose was going to win it. I certainly don't think I was alone in that. Once AJ Styles had come out, uh, I, I think I only got excited really for Curtis Axel. Came in with real energy, uh, which was really great to see. Um, so Curtis Axel. Uh, got excited for Kevin Owens. Uh, because I honestly thought he was going to go on and win it. It's always great to see Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Sami Zayn was a nice moment. Uh, but really, outside of that, I was waiting for Brian. And I honestly thought there was going to be a number 31. I honestly did. I thought Triple H was going to come out. I thought he was going to get rid of Reigns. I thought that it was going to look like all hope was gone. I thought that they would have learnt from last year, but there would be a number 31. And out would come Daniel Bryan to the biggest pop of the night, one of the biggest props in in recent history, and he w he could have come down. They could have given him the title. I know he's injury prone. I know it'd be a risk, but what's he what's he got to do? Realistically, what has he got to do? He's he defend it at Fastlane and defend it at WrestleMania. Are we are we seriously saying that Daniel Bryan, who has been medically cleared? is injured to the point where he can't stay in a rumble and defend a title twice. He could be dropping that title to Lesnar at WrestleMania. I don't think people would have too many gripes about it. What a headline match that would be. Part of me wondered if we'd see The Rock. I honestly thought The Rock was going to be there. Um, again, it didn't happen. With the participants that they had, they did okay. Uh, it certainly wasn't as bad as last year. Interestingly, you know, there was a moment where the crowd were really getting on Reigns. Uh, it looked like Reigns was going to eliminate Triple H. The crowd were very pro Triple H, um, and it looked as though it looked as though uh, Triple H was going to get eliminated. I honestly don't think this is people wanting Triple H to win the World Heavyweight Championship. It's just people not wanting to see Reigns win it. If you only presented with Reigns as an option and he's kicking authority's ass what are you going to do? You, you're probably going to cheer because there's not much else to do you present them with 29 other options Reigns was always in a fight that he couldn't win at the Rumble and it was the right call for him to not go over but where does that leave us now? On the road to WrestleMania, are we looking at a Reigns Triple H WrestleMania match for the title? I was really disappointed. Really disappointed. It's not a flat show. It's a it's a six out of ten Royal Rumble, and and trust me, last year they had a scrape to have got two. Um, so it's all right. It's all right. I don't want to be too down on it, but. I think Raw's gonna have to work really, really hard really hard so that's Royal Rumble uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are uh, obviously let me know if I've forgotten anything um, I will do a Raw reaction tomorrow I do have high hopes for a Raw you know it's going to be something different um, we've got Triple H obviously coming out with the title uh, Kalisto as a new champion as well uh, Charlotte's going to obviously address the Sasha um, incident Reigns will be knocking around. It'd be great to see a bit more of AJ Styles. He was the he was the highlight, no doubt about it. Um, so there's there's going to be some things to look forward to tomorrow. I would love some surprises. Um, I know you can't get surprised all the time, and I should just be happy with AJ Styles. But that had been reported. You know, there's this whole Balor club. There was no Finn Balor at the at the Rumble. There was no Daniel Bryan at the Rumble. <sighs> How hard is it to book this rumble? It shouldn't. It shouldn't be this difficult. Um, rumble for me, six out of ten. But as I said before, I'd love to know your comments. Thanks for watching, as always. Uh, I will do raw reaction tomorrow, and um, 